You're watching ESPN's Road to Champ Week presented by Wendy's. One of the MEAC's classic rivalries hits center stage next. North Carolina A&T visits North Carolina Central. Derek Jones joined by former Baylor guard King McLaurin King. These two teams headed to the MEAC tournament in a couple weeks thanks to a couple of key players. Let's start with NC Central. C.J. Kaiser, an elite bucket getter. Solid game last game, 19.7 rebounds. Transfer from Wichita State. If you want to see buckets, this is the kid to watch tonight. On the flip side, if you want to see a point guard who can pass, not only pass, lead his team, Cam Langley, look no further. Had a game this year where he had 20 points, 16 assists, and 9 rebounds. I don't know about you, but that's pretty impressive, Derek. No question. This is one of the key signature matchups of the season. The first of two meetings this week between the Aggies and the Eagles. And the opening tap controlled by North Carolina Central. We'll give you the starting lineups momentarily both ways. Central coming in with a four and five mark, just two and two in the MEAC, and we'll certainly go through their run this season as a three-pointer short out of the hands of Ty Graves. The Aggies send out Tyler May, Quay Parker, Cameron Langley, Webster Fillmore, and Tyrone Lyons. A very versatile lineup out there for head coach Will Jones. Out is Lyons, missing the three. Langley tries, he's way off. Loose ball in the scramble, still controlled by a and but they say the shot clock ran out. None of those shot attempts hit the iron there, King. Rough start right. for the Aggies. Uh, it's not the start you want to get off to, most definitely. You need to at least get, you know, you have the pregame jitters, especially because it's a rivalry game. So I would like to see Ball get into the paint a few times, and we'll see what happens. Perkins, Graves, Kaiser, Fennell, and Watley, the five. For North Carolina Central, we'll get a hold down low. And one thing to certainly monitor here in this game is the defensive tenor that A&T plays at, but also North Carolina Central. That's been something that's been missing from their MO this season. Coach Lavelle Moten not happy with their defensive play so far. If you watch the last game that A&T played against Florida A&M, they really, really got after them defensively. And that's what the turning point was in that ball game. Kaiser off on a three. The rebound taken by Langley. Langley, he's the key guy. One of the great assist men in MEAC history. The three well off. The scramble down low and a foul. As Parker going hard to the rack. And he may be going to the stripe here for a couple of Spinell there in the mix. He'll pick up his first foul. I know one thing Coach Moten will not be excited about is this lack of boxing out and lack of defensive rebounding. Rebounding has been a significant issue for North Carolina Central this season. Had a great chat with Lavelle Moten yesterday and the two-time MEAC Coach of the Year trying to put his team back into the NCAA tournament, but it has been a struggle this year just to get his team on the floor to practice. Yeah, it's got to be tough. You, know, you really don't know. The, the, the game could be canceled 24 hours before you play, or the game could be canceled you know, a week out. And when you have so many cancellations, it's hard to get in the rhythm. C.J. Kaiser trying to get into the rhythm early. He ties it up at two. First time that we saw something from two-point land instead of a three, as this time the throw inside the lane. Easy way wow. to get two points right here. C.J. Kaiser with a great backdoor cut. Scores having a net to get buckets. Easy buckets count two. Will Jones, second season as North Carolina A&T head coach. Has been very pleased with how his team has played, especially on the defensive side thus far. Langley hanging in the air and scoring. 
Good bucket right there with a hang in the air, draw the contact. So Cam Langley giving his team a 4-2 lead here early in Durham. Perkins penetrating, hanging, can't score at the rim. And the rebound taken by the Aggies. Holding a two-point edge. Outside three. That's good. Quay Parker drilling a three-pointer. Five-point edge for A&T. Quay is very streaky. If he sees one go in, it could be a long night. He sees the first one miss, he might stop shooting, but he's a very streaky shooter. He's more so known for his dunking exploits in some circles, but showing the range there. And I used to watch dude back in high school on his ball as light mixtape when he was jumping over everybody. Scramble on the floor. Damn Langley, he can pass, but he can get buckets too. Don't get it twisted. His ability to drive, get the end one that should have been called a foul. In right here, this is what he does best. Pass, get his teammates open, make his teammates better. Look for this all night. And a timeout called on the floor. 5-2 lead. And NCANT in early control. Point lead for North Carolina A&T. Derek Jones, King McClure with you. Aggies, Eagles, and Durham, North Carolina. Look at those rebounding numbers. Seven zip in favor of North Carolina A&T. Langley down low and the layup is in. Tough pass right there. It was a hard angle, but he's able to make that pass. Webster Fillmore with the bucket. 7-0 run for the Aggies. And a bad pass. Kaiser not on the same page with Ty Graves. A turnover on the Eagles. Cam Langley. Keep mentioning his name, but look at the angle. Sees him wide open off the roll. Quick, easy two buttons. Two points. Oh. Wob City, the layup no good. Oh. Fillmore there with a the finish. Look. Central better box out really quick if they don't this game to get ugly. Three buckets in a row for the Aggies. 11-2 lead. 9-0 run. And this is some of what Lavelle Moten feared. His team not sharp. The three big is in there. out of the hands of Nicholas Spinell. It's a big shot. He had 19, a career-high 19, last season against a and and a foul down low in the lane. 11-5 lead, quick shooting early on by NC a and College basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's. And Geico, you can see even more by bundling home and car insurance. It's an 11 to 5 lead for North Carolina A&T. The Road to Champ Week presented by Wendy's. Welcome in. I'm Derek Jones, joined by the former Baylor guard King McClure and King. North Carolina A&T, one of the few teams that's had success against North Carolina Central. What do you like about what North Carolina A&T does? I like a lot of things about this team, but just I'm going to point out three. Number one, they're tough. They always compete every single time they step on the court. Number two, they always get after you defensively, causing chaos, creating pressure. That's their, that's their motto. That's their MO. Number three, they have a point guard who knows how to get his teammates involved and get his teammates better. Missed shot out of the timeout. And a three right off the bat is drilled in the right corner. 
And that trims it to a three-point game at 11-8. So a quick pop from deep as Devin Palmer connecting. And we'll get a foul here back the other way. Devin Palmer continuing where he left off last game. Played really well, struggled the two games before that, but he's going to roll and we'll see if he can keep it up tonight. Palmer recently becoming a father. He's had to balance so much with academics, with being on the floor with his teammates during COVID and also a new father as well. And trying to help this team get back to the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's definitely not an easy thing to do. I can attest to that. A foul off the shot by Quay Parker, and that may very well be three shots here coming up. We'll check the replay. See if he fouled him right there. Oh, that's a foul. The body went into the shooter and made him fall. As a result, it's definitely a foul. Right call. And that's the second foul on Nicholas Fennell. So Parker will get three free throws op opportunities as a team. North Carolina A&T, 65% from the free throw line. What a Big Ten hoop doubleheader we have for you tomorrow. Number three, Michigan sits atop the conference. They'll host Luca Garza and number nine, Iowa in Ann Arbor at seven Eastern in a Sonic blockbuster. Then it's over to East Lansing for number four, Ohio State and Michigan State. The Buckeyes trail the Wolverines by a game and a half. Both games are on ESPN and the app. Big 10 play heating up down the home stretch as we make our way towards the NCAA tournament. Many teams still jockeying for position. Nice feed down low. Hanging in the air and getting fouled that time is Jonathan Maxwell, and he'll go to the line for a pair of free throws. In the aforementioned Big Ten, bracketology presented by the great Joe Lenardi. He's got the Big Ten slotted for 10 spots there. And King, they have been certainly one of the more premier conferences as normal in the, in the country this year. Yeah, I think when you look at the Big Ten and the Big 12, hands down, the D2 best conferences. I think the Big Ten might have five or six teams in the top 25 and the Big 12 with about the same, about five or six. But I mean, when you look at it, Baylor is one of the best teams in the country, Michigan also. So it, it's going to be an interesting uh, end to the season. Certainly, you might be a little harsh, maybe just a little bit to one of those teams to being <laughs> a former Baylor Bear guard. Look, I try not to be biased, but those are my guys. You know, you know I got to rock with the Bears. Four-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Three up. That's good. So the three-pointer dropping courtesy of Tyrone Lyons. Lyons can certainly mix it up down low, but also has the range to knock down three-pointers. It's a seven-point lead for the Aggies. Yeah, I really like Jordan Lyons. I like his length on defense because he, he gets a lot of steals and is able to get his hands on, on balls and tip passes that a lot of people can't get because of his length. But he's so versatile. He can guard multiple positions. He can also step out and shoot the three. Maxwell, the dish, oh. the dunk by Watley, just a little short. Scrambling to kick it out. Does so to Perkins. He's open for three. Got it. Oh, wow. Well, that's something you do not see much. Jordan Perkins only shot two threes on the year. That's his first made three of the whole season. That's not his forte. He is one of the all-time great assist leaders in program history. He's number two all-time in assists for the Eagles. At that time, showing the outside touch. Hopping into the lane as Lions. He gets stripped. Perkins on the run, trying to split a pair of defenders, and it's a player nope. control foul. It's a good call. Came down, that left arm went up and extended. It's an offensive foul going the other way. Not much selling needed there by Parker. As you mentioned, King, you could see that arm being extended. And that made the call very easy. Kobe Ayate, the senior in the mix, 
as Watley will take a seat. If you're just joining us, North Carolina A&T has been in control here early. Mm. We'll get a foul before Blake Harris can reach the midcourt line. And already a bonus situation on the way here. Courtesy of North Carolina Central, it's one and one. With 13.09 left to go in the half here, King. Yeah, that, that could be trouble for a century. Because whenever you put a team in the bonus, that means you have to play without your hands. Clearly in the first seven minutes, they've not been able to do that. So now they have to make adjustments because they see how the refs are calling the game. And perhaps even more damaging, that's the second foul on C.J. Kaiser. Right. C.J. Kaiser going to the bench with two fouls that we'll see where they can get their buckets from because right now I'm looking at Devin Palmer or even Jordan, per jo Jordan Perkins to be able to provide some scoring with, with, with Kaiser on the bench. Free throw shooting, not the forte of the Aggies. 308th in Division One, but so far seven of seven to start from the line. They lead it by six. Maxwell trying to work underneath, oh. gets swatted at the rim. Good pass. Down low, power dribble, the layup, that gets blocked. Yeah. So Tyler Jones couldn't come away with the finish, and the Eagles on the move. Maxwell, three rims out, tip, but a foul coming here against the Eagles. And King, it seems like North Carolina Central is having a lot of trouble mixing it up down low against this North Carolina A&T club. Yeah, North Carolina A&T is just crashing the boards right now. And they simply put it, simply put, they're just going to have to block out. They're going to have to put a body on somebody every time the shot goes up because right now that's why they're down by six. If they would eliminate some of these rebounds, they'd be winning this ball game. So, with all that being said, it's simple. Put your body on somebody and block out when the shot goes up. And rebounding, as we said, it's been a struggle so far for North Carolina Central this season. As Ayate takes a seat. 10-3 edge on the boards thus far for the Aggies. And Harris sinks both free throws. Eight-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Pressure once again picked up by oh. A&T and a steal. Down the floor, Parker oh. throws it down with a right hand. Oh, two. <laughs> the right-handed sledgehammer by Quay Parker. Double-digit lead for the Aggies. Catch and shoot three. Mm. Devin Palmer sinking it to stop the momentum of the Aggies. He's going to have to provide scoring with, with Kaiser in foul trouble. He must step up this game just like he did last game. Harris on the move, turns it over. Three on one. Moultrie all the way in, banks it home. Five straight by the Eagles. It's a good sign. Jameer Moultrie struggled the last two games, but he's a great scoring option off the bench. Averaging 10 points per game off of the bench. He provides a good spark and, and, and a good scoring option to come off as potentially a sixth man. Into the post for Jones. Hook shot, short. And Palmer can't quite catch up to it. Five point lead for A&T. When we come back, a look at one of the key figures in basketball history, John McClendon. John McClendon, one of the standout figures in the history of college basketball, learned the game of basketball from Dr. James Haysmith. He ended up coaching what was then known as North Carolina College, and of course what is now known as North Carolina Central. He coached the Cleveland Pipers of the ABL and became the first African-American coach of a professional basketball team. He is credited with developing the fast break full court press 
and four corners offense. That is quite a resume, King. Hey, that's a very impressive resume, and I just got to say thank you for the fast break because one of the best parts of basketball right there, getting out in transition and the full court press. You know a lot about that, especially these two teams, so it's an honor. Five-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Fred Cleveland Jr. bangs in a three from the right corner. It's an eight-point A&T lead. And a steal. So Langley once again in the mix. He had nine steals in the win over Florida A&M as the foul on the way off the drive by Blake Harris. Blake Harris has been a kid who has improved so much from this year to last year. Cam Langley doing what he does, finding his open teammates. Big shot by Fred Cleveland Jr. right there. So Blake Harris has improved so much. He averaged three points last year and averaged nine points, averaging nine points per game this year. Major improvement, major work. A rare missed free throw. First missed free throw of the evening's proceedings by the Aggies. Coach Jones said earlier this season that he felt like Blake Harris had conference player of the year potential, and that is high praise. Mm. And while this is certainly Cam Langley's team, Blake Harris is a name to watch. Well, the average is nine points off the bench. I mean, he, he, he can get buckets. He can score. He's very crafty at getting to the rim. He has a nice jumper. has a nice mid-range pull-up. He can get buckets, and, and he's really good. And he can play defense. Working down low is Palmer. He tries to go up, but Harris may have been there a little bit too active, creating the foul, and that will put Palmer at the strike. Palmer will try to cut into this deficit, which has been as large as 10 for North Carolina A&T. Derek Jones and King McClure with you. The Aggies and Eagles lock up in Durham. Saturday, our full day of college basketball across all of our networks is highlighted by these two matchups on ESPN and the app. Number five, Illinois have won seven straight. They take on number 23, Wisconsin in Madison at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, then number 11 Florida State leads the ACC and have a big matchup against 14 and 7 North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center. An eight point lead for North Carolina A&T. Hopping in the feed and the foul. Quentin Jones hitting the deck. And Maxwell. Protesting to the officials as he gets knocked to the floor. This is what penetration allows you to do. Allows you. Bigs to. Drop step and go straight up. The big has to slide up, help the penetration, help the guard that got beat. Wasn't able to recover, foul on the free throw line. Maxwell is the third player for North Carolina Central in this half alone to pick up two fouls. So Maxwell, Fennell, and Kaiser already with two fouls. This is a team that really had to stretch their depth when they last played back in the earlier stages of February against Florida A&M. Had some issues with food poisoning and injuries as well. Contributing to a pair of losses. Down nine here. Graves in trouble. And he calls a timeout. And King, the pressure getting to North Carolina Central. That's what A&T does. They, they get after you defensively. They make it hard for you to run your stuff, for you to get into your sets. 
They create chaos. Cam Langley King, he has been the, the straw that stirs the proverbial drink. <laughs> I like what you did there. Hey, he can score, but he can also pass. One of the best passers that I have seen this year in college basketball. The kid is talented. And like I said, he makes his teammates better. And that's a big compliment right there because a lot of guys, they play for themselves. But Cam Langley, he plays for everybody else. And his game is so complimentary to the rest of his team. He's the co-defensive player of the week in the MEAC. He had nine steals in a game against Florida A&M last week. He's just a guy that if you go to an open gym, if I'm at an open gym, I want to play with Cam Langley. He, he's going to feed me the ball and he's going to play defense. I want to score. And I don't want to play defense, so I'll let him do it. And speaking of defense, a shot clock violation against North Carolina Central and a turnover back over to North Carolina A&T with a nine-point lead. Right now, I feel like Central needs to match the intensity of A&T. Right now, you can tell that the intensity levels are two different spectrums right now. So Central has to match this intensity if they want to get back whatever well, in the ball game they want to cut the lead down Jones has that three rattle out the battle for the loose ball Fillmore had his hand on it and lost it out of bounds it'll go over to North Carolina Central Fillmore by the way having a very nice first half six rebounds to go along with four points he just plays so hard I mean you have to block him out at all times because if not he's going to crash the glass every single time Perkins having trouble getting that one away. Palmer having trouble with the handle. Seven to shoot. The feed on the cut to Palmer. He is tied up in the lane. It's a jump ball. And the possession arrow will point in favor of North Carolina A&T. And you mentioned King then being a step ahead of the Eagles. And once again, that coming to the forefront. Yeah, Central, they're keeping Central above the free throw line. Central's having a hard time getting the ball to the paint, getting any penetration, any movement. They're, they're forcing Central to stay above, not even above the free throw line, above the three-point line and run offense far away from the basket. Nine-point edge for the Aggies. Harris speeding things up into the front court. Harris surveying, maybe thinking about shooting. Oh. Now double clutches outside. The jumper just off from Quentin Jones. Kaiser all the way to the rack, counted plus the foul. The Miak's leading scorer going to work, cutting into this deficit. CJ Kaiser, one of the best scorers, not only in the Miak, but in the country. Able to slide away from his defender, get the and one. They be asking who am I? It's real, we live it. He's trying to get the guys ready for a basketball game, but more than anything, he's trying to get them ready for life. Check out the first two episodes of Why Not Us, North Carolina Central Basketball, now streaming exclusively on ESPN Plus and presented by The Undefeated. That is a great docu-series, and they're actually filming it during this game as you get a look at the film crew who is helping to put that together. And we've got an inside look through the first two episodes and a great insight to what this season has been like for North Carolina Central. And a big thanks to Chris Paul and Stephen A. Smith who have helped put this show in particular together. It's actually been a very, very good watch. Uh, so if you have not seen it, watch it. reason why, they were spot on with what they said about Coach Moe, not preparing guys for games, but prepare, preparing guys for, for life. I think that's super real. And with 7.21 left to go, a timeout called here by North Carolina A&T to talk things over up by six and we talked about Stephen A. Smith 
<laughs> 91 Winston-Salem State graduates, and man, I'll tell you what, that is such an important figure in sports broadcasting, but that guy knows a thing or two about basketball because he did it, King. I did not know. Today was the day that I learned Stephen A. Smith played basketball. I did not know. I thought he was just a journalist and just a broadcaster. I never knew he hooped. He's 6'1". Now, <laughs> he was a guard, and you were a guard. So yeah. how would you, with having very little tape on him, how would you go about dealing with a player like Stephen A. Smith? Uh, well, I mean, first and foremost, I'd have to see him play a little bit, just, just a little bit. But I know one thing, I would not get into a talking battle because I know he's going to be talking <laughs> trash the whole time, and I would not get into a talking battle with him because that's something you will not win. Of course, you can catch first take on ESPN Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Fred Cleveland Jr. launching and getting fouled along the baseline with just six seconds to shoot. And the 5'9 Cleveland will pay a visit to the charity strike. And another foul against North Carolina Central. That is number three on Jonathan Maxwell. <laughs> Cleveland Jr. in with a first. And one of the big differences so far in this game, King, free throw shooting. We, we've seen a team in North Carolina A&T who has not been solid from the line. They're getting a lot of opportunities, and they're converting. I was just about to say that. The A&T has been to the free throw line, I don't know exactly how many times, but they're converting on their, their, on their attempts. And I think that's the biggest difference in the game, the rebounding and the free throw shooting. 15 to 5 is the difference in free throw attempts in this game. Kaiser trying to shake free of Fred Cleveland Jr. He can't do it, but a foul first. And that is a height mismatch that you wonder how much longer they would leave him on Kaiser and Cleveland Jr. is heading out of the game. Over four minutes since the last a and field goal, by the way lob play in or it looked like they were trying to set up a lob play instead it was cleveland jr who was able to get a piece of it knocked out of bounds it'll stay with the eagles right there they need to run a better out of bounds play to get more movement because there was too much standing after the initial action of the the two bigs crossing there was nowhere else to go so the guards that's the time where they have to move to help the inbounder perkins will try it again Just under six and a half left to go in the first half. It's been mostly North Carolina A&T. Cameron Bowles in. He gets the lob from Perkins. Feed to Kaiser. Five to shoot. Kaiser falling to the floor. And a foul coming up against the Aggies. CJ Kaiser, great scores. One thing that they have to be able to do is find ways to get to the free throw line. Right there. CJ Kaiser going to the line for two shots. Parker picks up the foul. Kaiser averaging 18 points per game this season. Tops in the MEAC, good on the first. And talking to Coach Moten about CJ Kaiser, he said, certainly. Hey, look, the points are fantastic, but you're looking for ways that your veteran players can make your team better, and that's certainly some of the things that he's searching for from his club moving forward. Yeah, it's something you have to do as, a, as an elite player. If you want to be considered one of the better players on your team, not only do you have to be able to create shots for yourself, but you have to be able to create plays and create shots for others. And I think sometimes Kaiser has his mind on scoring only and not – passing Langley step back three missed it a little long but another rebound for the Aggies eight to one edge on the offensive glass Palmer with a steal 
Euro step beautifully done by CJ Kaiser. CJ Kaiser starting to turn up and give Central that spark. One possession game. The Aggies led by as much as 10. Parker open for three. That's no good. The box out in the Palmer rebound. Central doing a better job of boxing out. That's why they're starting to get back into this ball game. Palmer, ball fake, three. Oh. May have been deflected. Well short. Should have kicked that one to the corner. Cleveland will launch. He can't connect. Perkins with a three on two run out. The layup is in. Cameron Bowles with a finish. The lead is down to one. A 9 1 run for the Eagles. When you block out and secure the rebound, that allows you to get in transition. Get off and get easy points that way. The field goal drought continuing here for the Aggies. Langley in the lane, having trouble. Gets by a defender. Can't get it to go, but a foul committed. And this is on C.J. Kaiser. Fast break. When you secure the board, like I just said, easy points in transition. Jordan Perkins being that senior leader. Two assists, two easy buckets on the other end, two easy layups. Good defense leads to easy offense. Langley at the strike, missing on the first free throw. By the way, that is foul three on C.J. Kaiser. So for all of North Carolina Central's efforts, King, foul trouble still the preeminent storyline in this first half. But even with C.J. Kaiser going to the bench, it's not a bad thing for Central. Central, right now, they're relying on their defense. Their defense is what's keeping them in this ball game. Defense and rebounding. If they can continue to do that, they can still get points off of transition like they've been doing. And the free throw situation slowly correcting itself based off of the percentages as the Aggies starting to go a little cold from the line. Watley three, short. Under four minutes left to go. The Aggies still trying to find a way to get a Plus bucket this here. Zone. This zone by Coach Moden was a great decision. Cleveland misses the rim. Oh. Palmer launching a healthy three from the MIAC logo. Can't connect. And the rebound taken by the Aggies. You don't know how I feel about that shot. If it was wide open, it's one thing, but it was contested. It's super early in the shot clock. I think you could have got something better. Over seven minutes since the last North Carolina A&T field goal. Lions in the lane. His layup is no good. Tipped around and taken by Perkins. Oh, Euro layup is no good, but the follow is in from Cameron Bowles. And it's a lead for North Carolina Central. North Carolina Central, when they play, they play defense, that allows them to get good points right now. In the, in the half-court offense, they're struggling. But their defense is what's gotten them the lead in this game. 8-0 run, the first lead of the game for North Carolina Central. If they can continue to get stopped, they'll be okay. When they try to make it a half-court game, that's when they struggle. Another oh, yeah. missed shot, but the follow, that's no good. But we'll get a whistle here. Before Fillmore could get a crack at it. One-point lead for North Carolina Central. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA Insurance, auto renters and home insurance. Doesn't matter. Forget it. One point lead for North Carolina Central over North Carolina A&T and King. It's been about the shooting. North Carolina A&T has gone ice cold here down the stretch of the first half. Yeah, if Central could stop fouling, I mean, they'd be winning this game by more than just one point. If you look at the numbers, they're only shooting 29% from the field. 12 for 17 from the free throw line. Majority of their points are coming from the free throw line. So if they can play without fouling, it would be in a much better position in this game. 
It has just been a different vibe altogether in the back half of this first half as Parker at the strike. Yeah, the vibe has definitely been different. I mean, when you, NC a &T came out, they were the ones bringing the energy. They had more intensity. You could tell they were the team that was trying to win this ball game. Now all of a sudden things have shifted. NC Central seems to have more energy, and yes, that comes with runs, but you must maintain the same level of energy throughout the game in order to get victories. The Aggies regain the lead thanks to a pair of free throws by Quay Parker, who's the only player in this game in double figures. He has 12. That's the good news. The bad news is North Carolina A&T has missed their last 10 field goal attempts in a row. Good pass. Moultrie launches. He's fouled. And he'll go to the line. So a foul-heavy first half will lead to Jameer Moultrie heading to the line. Moultrie will try to give the Eagles the lead back, which they briefly held just moments ago. What a Big Ten college hoop doubleheader we have in store for you tomorrow. Number three, Michigan sits atop the conference. We'll host Luca Garza and number nine, Iowa in Ann Arbor at 7 Eastern in a Sonic blockbuster. Then it's over to East Lansing for number four, Ohio State and Michigan State. The Buckeyes trail the Wolverines by a game and a half. Both games are on ESPN and the app. And in the most recent episode of Why Not Us, that featured the North Carolina Central game earlier this season against the aforementioned Luca Garza and Iowa. The flip by Langley. Oh, that hold on, wait a follow. second. Oh, hold up. Webster Fillmore. Oh. Wow. That's what happens when you don't block out. You will be put on Sports Center top 10. <laughs> 21 to 12 edge in rebounding for the Aggies and that was an emphatic rebound and score 33 31 under 90 seconds left to go in the lane another yeah. dunk this time it is Tyrone Lyons with the flush And that's the kind of momentum that Will Jones wants to see his team pick up heading into halftime. Oh, my goodness. You must block out instead of ball watch because that man is coming to put it on top of your head. Catch a body. Oh, my gosh. Get another look at it as the mechanical engineering major connects. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty impressive major right there. Mechanical engineer. Well, all a part of what North Carolina A&T has to offer academically. Athletically on the floor, they are up by four here, 35 to 31. And it's Lyons and Fillmore with the pair of dunks to extend the lead to four. And you can see they're having a good time. Perkins drifting. Moultrie with the drive, open Perkins three. That's off. Hits the side of the backboard, a run out. Three on two. The layup the attempt is right blocked as Tyler May had his progress stopped at the rim. It's a good defensive possession. The Moultrie three is good. So defense turning into offense, and it's a one-point game again. Thirty seconds left in the first half. One point lead for the Aggies. Langley. Oh. Nice look inside. The layup is in by Tyler May. Beautifully done by May. Hey, I got to steal that. Uh, his bag right there. That was tough. <laughs> 
Perkins stripped three seconds left before the buzzer. Langley flips it up at the rim. It's no good. And that will close out the first half of action. 37 to 34 lead and King, the Aggies battling back to regain the lead. Hey, it's going back and forth. One team gets stops, the other team gets stops. One team scores, the other team scores. We'll see what the second half has for us. Stay tuned for more from Durham in a little while. Three-point lead for the Aggies at the half. Durham, North Carolina, the site of North Carolina A&T and North Carolina Central as a part of Road to Champ Week presented by Wendy's. It's a three-point lead for North Carolina A&T. We'll have stats and highlights much more here right here as a part of the road to champ week presented by wendy's you're watching espn's road to champ week presented by wendy's as we get set for the start of second half action it's north carolina a t 37 north carolina central 34. Hello, everybody. I'm Derek Jones. That's King McClure, and we're with you here, Dorm, North Carolina, the site. But, King, what's going on here with these two teams? Because we saw the first half really kind of a, a topsy-turvy half for both sides. Both teams are struggling in the half-court offense. However, NCAA and T is getting to the free throw line because Central is consistently fouling. On the flip side, Central's defense is allowing them to get in transition and get easy offense. So we'll see who can score more points and produce more in the half court. Foul trouble, a major storyline in that first half. Kaiser had three for North Carolina Central. Jonathan Maxwell with three as well. And that adding into the issues. Rebounding, fast break points. Some of the different things that came up in that first half. We'll see what the second half has in store as we're underway. And right off the bat, a turnover. The kick out outside, Parker three, no good. The struggles from the field continue. The finish down low, a foul. As Fennell could not get that one to go, but he got bumped by Tyrone Lyons on the way to the rim. Finnell, another one of those players in foul trouble for the Eagles. He had two in the first. Coach Will Jones, one of the few coaches in the MEAC who's had some success, whether it be as an assistant or now as a head coach, against his North Carolina Central team. Good pitch ahead by Jordan Perkins. Should have maybe been an and one but I think with Fennell and Kaiser back in the game with not foul trouble anymore because the second half I guess I think that would do a essentially do a better job of being able to score in the half court so a pair from Fennell cuts it to a one-point game at 37 to 36 North Carolina Central enjoyed a small amount of time in the lead in the first half it was mostly Owned in terms of runtime by North Carolina A&T. Jumper rattling out out of the hands of Tyler May, and it goes out of bounds. It will go over to the Eagles. They are shooting, speaking of North Carolina A&T, just 32% in this game. I think this game is going to come down to whoever can execute better in the half-court offense. I mean, both teams are getting stops. So whoever can execute and finally get some points in the half-court offense, I think will end up winning this ball game. That reminds me about a story referencing new addition that I have to get to. I'm glad you uh, brought up execution. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later on. Turnaround J by Kaiser missing. He'll try a three. That's no good. Watley, offensive board, gets it back. I mean, I can only imagine what story this is, what you're about to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't get a chance to talk about R&B much uh, during basketball games. Kaiser, fadeaway J, way off. And the carom, controlled by Langley. One point lead for the Aggies. Are you going to hit a no for us, Derek? 
Definitely not, as the foul <laughs> applied there on the Webster Fillmore shot attempt. And if that's against CJ Kaiser, that will be his fourth foul. See the drive right there. See, that, that, I think right there, that's just a dumb foul by CJ Kaiser. You know that your team needs you, you know that you're important in this ball game. Sometimes you have to just give up two points because you're worth more than those two points that you give up. And he has to head out. So you're talking about the MEAC's leading scorer averaging 18 points per game, picking up his fourth foul. He was probably frustrated by that bad miss at the other end. I mean, right there, that's just a frustration foul. You have to let those two points go. Who cares? It's just two points. Pass ahead by Perkins. Swing it to Palmer. Launches a shot, connects. Devin Palmer hitting the bucket, 39-38. It's a one-point lead, just underway, half two. Palmer's going to have to be the option that they go to right now, especially in the half-court offense. If they're not getting stops when it comes to the half-court offense, Palmer's the guy. He has nine. Lions launching top of the arc. That missing a little bit too strong. Perkins on the run out, two on two. Oh, Perkins nice. Euro step. That oh, finish is good. That right there was a nice move by Perkins. Able to move the ball, maneuver the ball to get over the hand. Nice Euro step. That's a nice finish right there. Balance scoring thus far for North Carolina Central. No player in double figures yet. The leaner and count it plus the foul. Out of the hands of Tyler May. Jordan Perkins. May I have this dance, sir? And, ooh. Tyler May. Stuck the hand in there. Beautiful floater. Nothing but net and one. May's been quiet so far this evening. He had 14 points on Sunday in the win against Florida A&M. That being his fifth point on the day. Two-point lead for the Aggies. Three minutes in, half two. Baseline drive by Fennell. Open shooter, it's Palmer. Missing the three. Langley in the lane. Gets bumped. Gets the bucket. Being able to finish through contact is so important for a guard because a lot of times you went into those tall trees down there and you have to be able to finish. And a steal, two on one. The layup by May is in. 46-47-0 run for the Aggies. That will lead to a timeout called by Lavelle Moten and North Carolina Central. Cam Langley, not only does he lead the conference in steals, but he does an assist too. NBA, as Sam Jones, an alum of North Carolina Central, NBA Hall of Famer, eight straight NBA championships with the Boston Celtics. An incredible career for Sam Jones. You know, the, the, the way I learned about you know, history as far as basketball in the 50s and 60s is through 2K. So they have like the all-time teams, and Sam yes. Jones is on there with Larry Bird, and yeah, that was one of my favorite teams to play with. So I learned my basketball history from 2K. I highly recommend, as Fennell to the cup cannot finish there, Maxwell does to cut it to a four-point game. If you need a lesson on basketball history, that's that's not a bad option. I mean, <laughs> I was always partial to the, the 90s Bulls and and uh, the, the, the Sixers contingent that's in that game. But, uh, but yes, the, the Celtics of that era, just tremendous. And Sam Jones, a huge part of it. Four-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Oh, and we're going to travel here. As May stumbled on the attack four point edge for north carolina a t can north carolina central come back four 
What a Saturday of college basketball we have for you on ESPN and the app. And these two games should be great. Dukes won four straight and are now firmly on the bubble. They'll host 11-5 Louisville at Cameron Indoor at 6 Eastern. Then it's a Big 12 battle between number two Baylor and number 17 Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. You would be hard pressed to tell the history of North Carolina Central without mentioning Duke because it was the secret game that took place back in March of 1944 between then North Carolina College and Duke. North Carolina College defeated Duke 88 to 44. The reason it was a secret, it was because that game was in violation of segregation rules at the time. It was one of the first integrated sporting events in the South. Players had to sneak around in order to get to the game site to play that because obviously they did not want it known that they were going to have this game take place, hence the name, the secret game. Wow. You know, just the thought of, like, segregation is so crazy to me. I mean, I know racism still exists in this world, but, like, the thought of segregation, not being able to go somewhere because you're black or because of your skin color, that's so crazy to me. Like, I couldn't imagine that. I mean, think about that. Players having to sneak around to just be able to play a basketball game. That, it's unbelievable. Langley, straight on three. Seven-point lead for North Carolina A&T. And that's, that's a, a game that certainly, it's not just important for North Carolina Central's history, but that's one of the more important games in the history of college basketball for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at college basketball now. I mean, you, your teams are made up of all types of, of, of different races, like the, all of sports. I think that's one thing, with one aspect of sports that I love so much. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you can play, you can play. Uh, if you can hoop, you can hoop. Oh, oh, hold on. Lions tried to dunk over, I believe, Palmer there. He got fouled on the finish attempt. It looked like that was an awkward play because I think some of the players thought that ball was out of bounds and touched out of bounds. So some of the flow of the game stopped. Yeah, it did snuck the ball. That ball was definitely out of bounds. I don't know what the ref was looking at right there. And Lions will try to take advantage of the Aggies' good fortune here. So the first in for Lions. And now as we get a chance to see Mike Melvin head into the game, North Carolina A&T trying to become the first MEAC team to win in Durham since 2019. January 26, 2019 to be exact, the last time the MEAC team won at North Carolina Central. And the Aggies have used a 12-2 run to build a nine-point lead. Good Finnell right falling there. to the floor. Melvin trying to break the press. Nice feed down low underneath the rim. The layup is no good. But Maxwell will go to the stripe. Lions in the mix there. It'll actually be Tyler Jones who picks up the foul for North Carolina A&T. Talking to Coach Moten yesterday, and, and here comes, spoiler, here comes the R&B reference in New Edition. He uh -oh. was referencing the chemistry of the team on the floor in terms of not being in sync with what they were able to do on the offensive side and the defensive side. And he likened it to the way a New Edition performance would happen and the way a Wu-Tang performance would happen. If you watch New Edition, they have you know dance moves, and they're spinning around. It's a lot of choreography to it. Wu-Tang, they're just getting up there and doing their thing. He <laughs> said the team needs to be more in the mold of New Edition. Right now, they're more in the, the standpoint of Wu-Tang. So he needs Man. more Bobby Brown and Ralph Tresvant and less Wu-Tang. Look, I don't know about Bobby Brown, man. <laughs> <laughs> the three-pointer, no good. That ball slapped away from Palmer. And it's out of bounds. It'll stay with North Carolina A&T. Hey, funny story. I was uh, 
in the eighth grade. I was a, I played Johnny Gill in New Edition in the eighth grade. I had to sing my mom on, on stage. <laughs> Get out. Stop it. Stop it. How'd you do? I, I, I did a, I did a great job. I mean, I had a lot of, um, <laughs> you know, a lot, a lot of people screaming. I think it was a good thing, but I did a really good job, actually. <laughs> you, had a lot, you had a lot of people screaming. I'd say you did a great job. Yeah, That's pretty it, impressive. It, 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 it was more so females than males, so that was a good thing, I guess. <laughs> Ball batted around and controlled by Melvin of the Eagles. Palmer trying to find some space to shoot. Leans in. Wow. Falling oh down nearly. Missed the shot. No whistle. Still battling down low. And finally, Tyler Jones looks like he will lead to a whistle. His contact against Palmer. Looked like there was two fouls before they called the first one. That one right there. But that's one impressive fight right there. That's an impressive fight right there. Right there, About Devin Palmer being able to get his rebound amongst three a and players. Palmer trying to make his way towards double digits. If he gets a free throw here, he'd be the first player for the Eagles in this game to hit the double figure marker, and he does. Fillmore making his way back in. If you're just joining us, he had a thunderous put-back dunk to help pace that first half lead of three for North Carolina A&T. Both are good from Palmer. Seven point lead, 51-44. The Aggies out in front. They've been out in front most of the way. Langley in the paint. Oh. Scoop layup is in. That was impressive. The ability to split through traffic and finish through contact. Nine point edge. Largest lead of the game for North Carolina A&T has been 10 points. That in the earlier stages of the first half. Palmer, catch and shoot three, off. And the rebound taken away by Blake Harris. Harris. Trying to pick his way through the defense. Gets fouled on his way to the paint by Moultrie. That's number one on Jameer Moultrie. Parker will get a breather. Langley with the lob for Harris. Harris could not get the rim on that shot attempt, but there was a reason for that. He got fouled. Fifty-three, forty-four lead. When we come back, a look at the new Why Not Us trailer. All right, a couple of things. I don't know if you guys already heard the news, but Bethune Cookman canceled their season. We got to look at that and say, okay, it's a gift and a curse. The gift is we don't have to travel to Florida two times, and we can preserve our budget. The curse is we still need four more games. And I'm not quite sure they're going to be the only one. The goal for North Carolina Central Basketball is to make it to the Sweet 16. In order to make it to the Sweet 16, this year during this pandemic, the NCAA is mandating that you play at least 13 games. We don't know how many games we're going to be able to get in because trust and believe there's going to be some cancellations. If those games are taken away, we don't get what we call the guarantee games, where we get an opportunity to go play the larger schools and, and get paid. When you go play those big schools, they normally give you a check in range from $70,000 to $95,000. That essentially funds your basketball program. That's a look at episode two of Why Not Us, the inside look at North Carolina Central basketball and you know, King, he, he brings up so many uh, salient points there in that discussion and what this season has done in some regard to the financial abilities of a program because you don't have those guarantee games. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I keep talking about this, but I, I think one of the biggest things that we do not bring up is just the, the player's mental health. I mean, I, I think that's such a huge point that's not really touched on much. 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 Because I think a lot of times, a lot of these players for 14 days are not playing basketball. They're just in their rooms seeing other teams play. Like, imagine what that can do to you as a player. That can really mess with your mind. And the docu-series takes you through some of that because, remember, this is game 10. As we get a look at the, the filming crew for Why Not Us that you can find on ESPN+. Plus. This is game 10. They're trying to get to 13 games to have a chance to be able to qualify for the NCAA tournament as once again Webster Fillmore taking the elevator to the top floor for another finish. North Carolina Central has the game on Saturday against North Carolina A&T. And then a couple of games they hope after that as a three-pointer by Moultrie misses. And a foul as Melvin and Harris collide. Who else? Cam Langley coming down the lane, lobbing it up to the athletic Webster Fillmore. An 18-4 run altogether here for North Carolina A&T, and you wonder how long C.J. Kaiser is going to stay in this game, King. He has four fouls. How do you so, manage him the rest of the way? This is where it gets interesting. This is where trust comes into play for, as, as, as a coach. I mean, a coach, how much do you trust your players? It's your best player, your best scorer, leader of your team. 11 minutes to go, you have four fouls. You have to be able to trust them, and he has to know that I can give up two points. I can give up a layup because those two points – aren't worth the 22 that I could get. As Melvin hits the deck, and he's fouled. The last foul was committed by Blake Harris. That was his third. This is the first on Kenyon Doolin. Another thing Kaiser has taken into consideration is the fact that he loves to drive. And I feel like right now that could be a dangerous situation because sometimes he just puts his head down and goes. He needs to be able to be able to come to a jump stop, be able to take his time and read what the defense gives him instead of trying to force the, for, uh, instead of trying to force it, I can talk right now. <laughs> you play Johnny Gill, it's all good. Three pointer, that in the <laughs> left corner is good from Moultrie. Man, I was the flyest Johnny Gill you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> 10 point lead after the three-pointer to stop the run, or at least stop the momentum of the run. Oh, good pass. Down low, beautiful look inside. As Quentin Jones with the finish. So Jones extends the lead out to 12 at 59-47, approaching the midway point of the second half. I'm just super impressed with Cam Langley's ability to always spot and locate the open man, but not just locate, be able to execute the pass. Ball hits off the chest of Maxwell, and it's a turnover. Harris, far side, surveying the defense. Shot clock to 10. Harris cuts in, jumper short, tip back outside to him, another rebound offensively for the Aggies. Under 10 again to shoot. Fillmore, got it. Webster Fillmore having himself a day. This is where Jordan Perkins, the senior leader, needs to step up and control his team, put his team in situations to win, create ball movement by penetrating to the, to the paint, find his teammates, create for others, but put his teammates in situations to get good shots. Nice follow there by Fennell off the missed shot to cut it to a 12-point game. Wilmore, by the way, excuse me, Fillmore, 12 points, nine rebounds, one off of a double-double. Right here, Jordan Perkins, able to locate his open teammate. Didn't make the shot, but 
Fennell right there to clean it up with an easy putback. Perkins needs to do more of this. Find his teammates right now because they need a leader to control this game before the game gets out of hand. And it's been a struggle without a doubt for North Carolina Central offensively in the last couple of games for them. We've mentioned they've had so many long layoffs this year. They've only practiced in total about 11 times this year. And that has been a, a point of contention for Lavelle, Lavelle Moton. He has really been frustrated by, you know, and it's a part of the situation because of COVID. They just have not been able to get out there on the floor and the cancellations. How much of, of that lack of practice time can hurt you, in your opinion, King? I think it, it, it's huge. I think it hurts. It can hurt you tremendously because the, the number one thing I think about when I think of lack of practice is you getting out of shape. And it's hard to get into shape, but it's easy to get out of shape. So when you're not practicing and you're just sitting around in the crib and you're not able to run and do the condition that you're normally used to on a day-to-day -day basis, that's the biggest thing that comes into play. At the end of the game, that's when your legs go. That's when your mind goes because when you're tired, your mind is the first thing to go. So that right there is the biggest thing, is the conditioning. And in those two losses to Florida A&M, they were missing players because of injury and also food poisoning, an issue as well during that stretch back in earlier February. And they scored a combined 97 points in two games. So that mm. is not where you want to be, and that's normally not where this team is. Remember, they're the number one team in the MEAC in field goal percentage. A miss by Harris, but a steal by Harris. Mm -hmm. Harris, baseline attack. Hanging in the air, can't finish. Knocked around and over to the Eagles. That was good recognition by C.J. Kaiser. Was about to foul him, try to cut him off on a drive, but it let the guy go by. Maxwell's rainbow three misses. Loose ball foul coming up. If it's against Harris, that's number four. Man, the ref lost his shoe. I don't think I've ever seen a ref lose their shoe in the game. Yeah, you don't see that much, <laughs> considering how much they run on the floor. You'd think that might happen more, but uh, not, not normally the case, but the case here. Lionel Butler, Keith Fogelman, and Haywood Boston. Look at it. Oh, just yeah. left it right there. Yeah, flat tire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Channeling Zion Williamson there. <laughs> Not as big of a sneaker issue as Zion had that night. Oh, you're rocking the Nike Studio. Those are, that's a pretty, uh, pretty sweet shoes. You got to double tie him now. You get, yeah, you got to make sure that the knot, you can't just single knot that. You have to make sure that does not come undone. Man, I, in all my years of basketball, I've never seen that. Seen plenty of players, no referees. Yeah, that's a relatively common thing you see happen to players, but you're right. To officials, almost never. Straight on three. That one missing too strong off the back of the rim, and the shooting woes continue from the outside for North Carolina Central. We will get a whistle here as Jameer Moultrie not pleased with that call. And time slowly becoming the enemy of North Carolina Central, trailing it by 12. More in a moment. In the NC Central documentary, you see Chris Paul in it. But tonight you have seen flashes of Chris Paul and Cam Langley right now. His ability to knock down the three finish through contact for and ones and oh yeah he can get his teammates better not only can he score but he can allow his teammates to set them up to score cam langley has been super impressive i like the kid a lot i don't know about you Derek, but I'm, I'm super impressed with him he has done a, a fabulous job uh, through his time with north carolina a and t and you get the sense that the players follow his lead He's the MEAC co-defensive player of the week for his efforts last week against Florida A&M. And tonight, he once again is doing a little bit of everything. And defensively, he, he, he gets in the passing lanes, great steals, turns into easy offense. 
I don't know. I'm super impressed. If I'm like I said earlier, if I'm in the open gym, I want Cam Langley on my squad. Langley. A three by Jones missing a little bit too strong. Tip back outside. Langley taking his time, and, and that's one of the things here with the remainder of this game. The Aggies, they're not going to make a lot of mistakes to give Central a chance to get back into this one. Central's going to have to take it from them. But one of the biggest things you have to do is you just created two stops right there. The first stop, but you did not secure this stop with the rebound. So they got another 20 seconds to try to operate. Time is not in your favor. Time is working against you, so you must secure every stop with a rebound. Kaiser in the lane. Good defense by the Aggies. The dive on the floor. Langley away. They have the numbers. Langley Ooh. down the floor. His oh, layup no, is good. Didn't. And the foul. Oh. Cam Damn, Langley. Langley. Calm down. Oh. Fighting for the loose ball. Cam Langley said, I can do it all. I can pass, but yep. Crossover. And one left hand finish. Take the bump. In and out cross. Oh. Him drawing the contact. He's done that like three times tonight. His ability to get into the defender's body, but still keep his eyes up on the layup. That's tough. That's really tough to do. Cam Langley submitting his resume for MIAC Player of the Year. Can't connect on the three point play. This is tied the largest, tying the largest lead of the game for the Aggies at 14 with six and a half left to go. Palmer tries a three. That's good. It's much needed right there. Much needed. Palmer must get going in these last six minutes, especially with Kaiser and foul trouble. But Kaiser also has to be able to get going too. You average 18 points a game for a reason. Langley. Feed to Jones. He'll try a three. That rattles out. The rebound by Fillmore. The follow is good by Quentin Jones. Webster Fillmore keeping the possession alive, extending his first ever, or excuse me, the first double double for him of the season. And that's a 13 point lead. And that's what'll kill you. You got the stop, didn't secure it with the board. Oh! Lions! The lead at 15. But Watley fouled on the other side of it. Jordan Lyons, the link. Able to get in the passing lane and secure it with the flush. Talking to Coach Jones, he mentioned, you know, this is kind of, this is who they are. They want to get out and run. They want to get, get out and have some lob plays and really augment that and help that out with playing solid defense. And they've been able to live up to that so far, holding North Carolina Central to just 53 points. But you're seeing the rebounding just really helping to amplify things for this Aggies team. Yeah, that's what stands out to me. I mean, I think they play again on Saturday. I think the one thing, if I'm Coach Moden, that I'm changing is we're going to box out these next two three practices i promise you we're going to do nothing but rebounding drills because if we rebound you're in a completely different predicament completely different situation right now you might be winning this ball game because you're getting the stops you just aren't securing it with the rebound langley top of the key near side oh, no. play and that Whoa. one went right in the rim it's a three-pointer wow <laughs> Langley didn't get enough on that pass. He was trying for an alley-oop, but instead it's a three-pointer. Palmer can't answer the loose ball, and it is Fillmore who takes it away. Man, that's just one of those plays you just got to accept. Like, man, it's not our night. Rare for this to happen at North Carolina Central against the MEAC team. The block against Lions down low, but a foul. This is a horrible pass, but good shot. It, <laughs> oh, wait, that, that's basket interference. Not how you draw it up, but it works. Ooh. Well, that's, I think yeah, he that's tipped close. that. Oh, he tipped that. That's basket interference. King, I think you have a point there, sir. That 
looked like on, on that next replay. It looked like his hand got a piece of that basketball. Yep. It touched his hand right there. A fortuitous break and bounce. As the Aggies extend their lead, it's the largest of the game, 72-53 with 4.38 left to go. The Eagles are 119 and 24 under Lavelle Moten at home. As that ball is knocked out of bounds, 61 and 12 against MEAC teams. Eighteen wins in a row at home, and that loss. January of 2019, that was against North Carolina A&T. That's impressive. It's almost like the, the Kansas of the MEAC, but not anymore because that's dead. Three ball out of the hands of Cleveland missing, but another foul this time. As Lions on the attack, and right there is Kaiser, and if that is on Kaiser, that is his fifth, and he's gone. So Lions at the stripe, and it is actually charged to Perkins. That's his second. Must box out right here. That's the story of the game. And once again, we see another offensive board by a &T. Lions drills a second, the lead at 21. This was a three-point game at halftime. The feed down low, Palmer's reverse layup, that misses, tipped around, he grabs it, gets it back, can't put it in, but two free throws coming for Devin Palmer. It has been a tough, tough evening here for North Carolina Central. The Aggies out in front. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try the new jalapeno popper chicken sandwich and salad today at participating U.S. Wendy's. And USAA Insurance, auto renters and home insurance. It is a lead that has ballooned further and further for this Aggies team and unfortunately, for North Carolina Central, time is running out on them. They are two and two in the MEAC in the Southern Division. Again, if you're new to the situation for the MEAC this year, they've split it up into two divisions, North and South. So basically, the Northern and Southern Divisions will eventually meet up as a part of the MEAC tournament. That will be a seven game, or excuse me, a seven team set up for the MEAC tournament this year as the Northern and Southern Divisions. You get a look there. As Norfolk State half game lead over Morgan State and Coppin State in the North and then in the South, North Carolina A&T in control of things. Shout out to Coach Merritt in Morgan State over there. Doing a thing, Coach Merritt and I go way back to probably eighth grade. Shout out to Coach Merritt. A lead of 19 with just over three and a half minutes left to go. And the layup that time no good by Harris. The kick out, Palmer. Pump fake, trying to find some space, leaning in. His layup is good, plus the foul. Devin Palmer, good pump fake, got the defender in the air, able to hang in, hang in the air for the nice and one. This is a tough moment for North Carolina Central because this is a roster as Harris is fouled out. 
This is a roster mostly comprised of upperclassmen. And they honored the seniors during pregame, including Devin Palmer, who sinks the free throw. Nineteen points for Palmer. He has been able to put up some numbers, but it is not equaled into greater success for this Eagles team. The kick out for Lions. Lions spinning, hanging, can't score. Perkins rebound. You got to kick that one out. And a whistle and a foul on the way. As Cleveland Jr. among those nearby. And you have to give a lot of credit to Will Jones here. He felt pretty confident talking to him yesterday about his team's chances just in general. And he knew that this is a good North Carolina Central team despite where they're at right now in terms of record-wise. And he said, to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And mm. with 2.51 left to go, they are on their way to grabbing the first of what they hope will be two wins this week. I mean, that's the, mentality. Central. that's the mentality that, you know, you see on the court displayed right now. I mean, they take on a, a, a lot of times you take on the personality. The team takes on the personality of the coach. And when you have that in order to – to be the best, you got to beat the best mentality. That's what these guys are doing. They, they came in the central and they tried to take care of business. Well, they took care of business and took it to them and fought and played harder. And that's why they're winning this game. We had a chance to see Coach Jones there paying tribute to the late, great John Thompson with a T-shirt honoring John Thompson. Also, he had the towel as well with a picture of John Thompson on there. Of course, the iconic pose of Thompson with the towel throughout his career on the sideline. So you get a chance to see that towel there placed over the shoulder just like Coach Thompson had it over the years. And John Thompson, obviously one of the iconic figures in the history of college basketball and we'll have a chance here to see the Aggies huddle up because a timeout has been called by North Carolina A&T with a lead of 14. Coming up tonight another NBA Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Steph and the Warriors finish up a four game road trip against Malcolm Brogdon Sabonis and the Pacers at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Then it's the top two teams in the West. LeBron and the Lakers are in Utah to take on Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz. Our coverage starts with Stephen A's pregame, Sports Center at 7. Al Adels, one of the most notable figures in the history, and speaking of the Golden State Warriors, Al Adels, North Carolina A&T alum, he had the number 22 retired. He was the first player to ever have their number retired by North Carolina A&T. You can see him there battling with Wilt Chamberlain as a member of the San Francisco Warriors. And he led that team eventually to an NBA championship as a head coach in 1975. One of the first African-American head coaches in the NBA and one of the first African-American head coaches to pick up a win of an NBA title in his career. A 14 point lead here. As North Carolina Central, unfortunately not able to get over the hump here thus far against the Aggies. And we could see this matchup a couple of more times. Of course, we'll see it on Saturday at Club Corbett as it's known in Greensboro. <laughs> But also, they could meet up again in the MEAC tournament. And I did a game. I did a game last night at Club Corbett uh, pre-COVID. That was something like I've never seen before, Derek. I've never seen that. 
The atmosphere was crazy. Kaiser getting the roll there to cut it to a 12-point game with 140 left to go. Langley harassed, near side pass. And that is unbelievable. As the runner by Cleveland is no good. The first field goal. It's a 10-0 run right now for Central, but they need some more stops and turnovers here. Three by Parker nope. does not help. With 53 seconds left to go. I, mean, I guess the good thing you take from this is that the team is always going to fight and they're never going to give up. A dive on the floor by Cam Langley. And how about that? 13-point lead with 43 seconds left to go. And he's still out there competing and diving on the floor, even though victory looks like it's almost assured here for North Carolina A&T. That's what you want to see out, out of your leader, out of your best player. That's what you expect. You want him to dive on the floor because the team follows what he does. The dive on the floor, up by 13, 40 seconds to go. I'm still going to dive on the floor because that's the type of leadership I want to show my team. And the Aggies continue to be streak stoppers. They will end this 18-game home winning streak of North Carolina Central. They ended a 12-game home court winning streak of Florida A&M on Sunday. And they will patiently take their time here as Langley fumbles that ball heading towards the lane and Cleveland Jr. at the controls. A long oh, wow. three is banked <laughs> in. Wow. Sign of the times for Fred Cleveland Jr. Perkins leaning in, that's an air ball, and that will just about do it. An impressive second half for North Carolina A&T. King, a 16-point victory. A&T came out here, played harder, rebounded the ball, and that is why they won the game today. For King McClure and our entire crew, I'm Derek Jones saying so long. The Aggies win at 79-63 over North Carolina Central. Have a good night, everyone. Watching ESPN's Road to the Championship presented by Wendy's. You're watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Tonight, we are in Tampa, Florida, inside the England Center. The lights are off. They're getting ready for showtime.